Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Review. I am your host, Thomas Enzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Race cars, lasers, airplanes. Here in Duckburg. No, go to the corner. What? No! Uh, no, no, no. Wrong you... lyrics! Yeah, I will say you, ha- you have to be docked some points there, Norman. You are just slightly off to the tempo. Really? Yeah, it's uh, race cars, lasers, airplanes. It's a oh. duck blur. Let's solve the mystery. Da-na-na. Or rewrite history. Duck tales. <laughs> See, now you're getting it. Now we're in the spirit. Huzzah. Yay. Uh, that, that's going to be fun. So anyway, uh, well, I, I think I have to go back to the top for this one because us bursting into songs, um, not strange, but random oh it's it's gonna happen no matter what oh true this that is... true that uh but still uh let's start from the very top uh in today's episode review we are doing a patreon sponsored video and in said video we are going to review dangerous currency the duckwing duck cross duck tails comic by kaboom studios Kaboom! There you go, Firebrand. <laughs> uh, why is it Boom Studios? I, I do not know which one it is. Is this Kaboom? Well, Kaboom. Well, it sounds like they blew it. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, there's history of this one, but like I mentioned before, this is a Patreon sponsored video by Master of Lag, and he wanted us to review one of two things, our pick. Either Dangerous Currency, the DuckTales, Duckwing, Duck Crossover, or the Superman vs. the Elite animated movie by the DC animated crew. And we picked DuckTales because why not, right? My childhood! Yay! In a Scottish bra! <laughs> uh, also my childhood! Even though I'm Irish. <laughs> really? 90% Irish. Irish. Really now? I did not know that. Oh, cool. Well, no wonder Sethi and I have somewhat of a love-hate relationship. <laughs> why? We're Irish and Scottish! Oh, uh, they fight. Yes, true that. And they fight, and they fight, and they fight, and they fight. Yet my ancestor got her head cut off because she decided to oppose the Queen of England. Oh, my. But um, on a brighter note. Yeah, thank you for the heads up. Yep. <laughs> oh, you. So, but anyway, where do we even start off with this one? Um, I, I think we should go for a bit of background on this one. And opening up the wiki page... Uh, Dangerous Currency is a four-part comic book story that is a crossover between DuckTales and Darkwing Duck, written by Ian Berlin and illustrated by James Silvani and Jose Massaroli. That's how you say it. Um, it was published across the final two issues of uh, DuckTales and Darkwing Duck Comics, book published by Boom Studios. The four parts of the story were published in the following issues. Uh, part 1 is in DuckTales 5, Part 2 is in Darkwing Duck 17, 3 is in DuckTales 6, 4 is in Darkwing Duck 18. The story was published without approval from the Walt Disney Company and it Receive negative reception from fans, uh, including backlash from former Boom Kids editor Aaron Sparrow, who plotted the first arc, Duck Knight Returns. Oi, the name. Before being fired. Oh god. It's fun. I know, it's just like, the Duck Knight, really? <laughs> hey, if you, I've, see, I've read issues of Spider Ham. I can, I can take just about anything at this point. <laughs> Alrighty then. Spider Ham? Spider Ham does whatever a Spider Ham does. Alrighty then. But anyway, uh, for this reason, the story arc is not considered canon, and as such, it is the only story arc from the Boom Studio Darkwing Duck comic that was not reprinted in Darkwing Duck, the definitive Dangerous Edition. So, yeah, technically this story here is fan fiction. Technically, although that means... The impression I got leading up to reading this is that they were sort of leading up to this uh, conflict. And so without this, the rest of the comic series is just sort of left dangling. Probably. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, if you haven't been following the whole Duckwing Duck slash 
DuckTail story. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. This is one of those things where you should read the whole thing to find out if the ending of this comic plays a huge part or not. But uh, that's not our uh, forte. We're just pony reviewers reviewing a comic about ducks. Yes. Yes, we're really outside our elements on this one. Yep. But let's go for our standard protocol, which is first impressions. Silver, what do you think of said comic? Mm, that's a hard question to ask. See, this stars characters I used to watch when I was growing up and thought very highly of. I usually define myself by my love of Transformers, but we shan't get into that. Thanks, Michael Bay. Mm. Shaw. <laughs> But uh, this is a comic that throws every character from both series at you in some capacity and with some plot twists that you're like, I don't know if that's really clever. It's like, oh, it was that character all along. Why? Huh? What? It tries for conflict, but it's so crowded. It's so full of every single character that I feel like they're all elbowing one another just to have a screen time. And so you're not really sure who's the real focus. You're not sure who's really growing. The biggest thing I took away from this was Scrooge McDuck trying to lecture some sense into Darkwing. But it's not really... uh I don't know if it really took. At the same time, it is so much fun just to see these characters together tackling a big adventure, seeing how everyone gets in on it. It's sort of like a infinite crisis for Disney. <laughs> yeah. But all in all, it does feel like fan fiction. It's like you're trying to pile on all this really cool stuff that you've seen, but in a sense, that's not giving the, the show room to breathe. Probably fan fiction is not the right word, but a fan comic, probably. Well, either way. Mm -hmm. Either way. So that those are my thoughts. All right. And Seppi, what about you? Ah, uh, me. Oh, boy. I'm honestly, I'm I'm almost done with the third issue because I didn't realize there were two more issues after the, um, you know, two that you sent me. All right. Anyways, <laughs> so, all right, my thoughts on this. Well, I'm going to be honest, I didn't grow up on this series or any of these series. I've never even heard of Darkwing Duck up until, like, last year. Really yes. now. And the only two episodes of DuckTales were the ones that were left on the VHS of uh, Obscurity that I really enjoyed, mm. where the only two episodes of DuckTales I've ever seen in my life was the one where there was, like, this Tarzan parody, like, uh, this one Jungle Boy was left in the jungle even though he's royalty. Oh yeah, me have And the Viking one. That's me the have... only one I remember. Those are the only two episodes I've ever actually had witnessed because that's all I had on VHS. I remember I, the funny thing is I actually remember that Tarzan one. Me have royal tattoo. And it's uh it's a granny story. Yeah, it's the uh the nanny yeah, nanny. It's a nanny. So I showed my nanny. Oh although right there. I I did, like, uh, when I saw, like, some certain Disney references, like, in the second comic, they have, like, a Lilo's doll in one panel, and the one big thing that sort of made me had a bit of fangasm, because I really enjoyed the video game where he's the main monster villain thing. Video game? The Phantom Blot. Oh, boy. That guy is scary. Oh, is it, okay, you're going to have to catch me up, because I think that's a more recent development. Epic Mickey. Oh. Epic Mickey. Haven't you seen that? Oh, that one. Hang on, uh, let me find at least, like, the trailer. Is that where he comes from? Because I don't remember him in Dark No, Tales no, 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 no. He, he came from, like, the uh, Mickey comics, but that's how I remember him. He's from a video game. Well, well technically, he, what? I mean, you, you know what, uh, semantics. He's more of a monster, like, uh, you know, in this, like, a uh, video game, but no. He, he's actually a, um, he's, I don't know, he's more of a villain, like, actual, like, villain thing. I, I don't know. I, I don't have much history, but when I think of the Phantom Blight, I think of the threat that was an epic Mickey. Well, well, we'll have to catch up on that. All right. And... I'll, I'll, 
I'll get a trailer or whatever. Alrighty then. And well, as for <laughs> me, huh, well, my history with DuckTales and Darkwing Duck spans a really long time. I remember watching uh, DuckTales since I was a wee little baby boy. And I highly enjoyed it. The, the song was fun. And I believe DuckTales, the game for the NES, was the first game I completed. And I was highly proud of myself for that one. Um, I did that too. I, I was sick that day. <laughs> and I just hung back from school and I beat the whole shebang. I know. And the the moon stage has a really good song. Anyway. Yeah. But anyway, um, back on to this comic. Um, This comic here really... I don't know what to expect. Like, I, I went in reading a bit of the wiki page that I summarized for you guys at the very start and went in, you know, just being positive because, you know, I don't want to judge a book by its cover or what people said. But reading through this one, the art here, the whole thing, I got confused really fast. Like, I, I think I got confused by page um four, was it? Like, okay, uh, how did that happen so fast? Like, uh, alright. So, what's the power of this thing? What's its limitation? What's its uh, boundaries and whatnot? Like, huh, okay. Hmm, alrighty then. And just looking at Scrooge McDuck and Darkwing Interact was kind of a, an interesting one too, where, oh, I see, you guys are fighting for the limelight. And since this is a Dark Tales comic, uh, Scrooge needs to win. And since this is a Darkwing comic, Darkwing needs to win. And okay, uh huh. And there are certain parts of the comic where we go into the next chapter and what? How did that happen? When did that happen? What? This doesn't make sense. Making sense? Oh, what fun is there in making sense? Uh, coherent storytelling. That's the thing. Uh, what's the word? Um, it, like, I forgot the word, but at least you need to have some kind of, um, continuation from one panel to the next panel. I mean, come on. Wait, wait you need continuity? Yay! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, but overall, um, I had a good time reading this comic. It's my first Disney comic that I read. I think, like an official Disney comic. Yes, this is the first one. And, well, it's okay. But anywho, um, those are my thoughts. So, for this one, if you're interested in reading, um, go ahead. I believe it's also on Comixology. I think. I'm not 100% sure. Do you know what? I'm going to double check first because since we mentioned earlier before that uh, the Disney Corporation did not really enjoy this comic, so it may not be up there. So let me double-check first. Um, Silver, Sappy, banter for a while. Hey, Sappy. Banter, banter. Well, tell, me yeah. about the, tell me about this Inkblot guy, for he is the head villain, and yet I, I've never seen him before. Well, I've only seen him in the, um, you know, epic Mickey games where he's portrayed as monstrous. Other than that, like, I looked him up again, like, to make sure he's the same guy. Oh, he's this, like, a... Uh, uh, who's a more, what's it, like, a Disney, like, click on the thing that I sent you if Norman is not recording us who's or something. Moritz? Like, ah. look at the bottom, yeah, like, click on the link, like, you know, or go to the timestamp I put in, and that's where I see him? Like, that's my first discovery, at least. Uh, Epic Mickey 2, oh, alright, okay, okay, okay. No, just Epic Mickey, not the second one. The second one sucked. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, the the video you showed is just from Epic Mickey 2. But anywho, um, I've checked Comixology and no, it's not there. Hmm, well, probably you can find it at Boom Studios or, you know what, online. Probably it's online. You know what, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell people where to find it. If you're smart, you can just Google, uh, Darkwing Duck, DuckTales crossover comic. I think it's the first thing that pops up. Yeah. So, anyway, um, for this review, we are going to go on a hybrid style where we do scene by scene and teams at the same time. We go through it by scene, but if a team comes up, we're going to highlight on it and we're going to talk on it, like we usually do sometimes. But anyway, let's start off with issue 5 of DuckTales, the first chapter or the first part of Dangerous 
currency. Boy, um, <laughs> I wish I had more knowledge on Darkwing and DuckTales. So anyway, um, we start off with a bit of backstory where the narrator tells us that this is where Scrooge keeps his money, in the money bin. Yay, you know that very uh, iconic big building with the cash symbol where Scrooge takes his money bath each day where Peter Griffin broke his bone trying to do the same thing. And also, doesn't it seem kind of jerkish to flaunt that in front of the city? Hey, everybody, check out my money! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but then we are also informed that what you may not know is that this is where Scrooge houses certain assets. In the, It's the headquarters of Quackers, a corporation in St. Canra, a town... Not, uh, hmm? Oh, I, I'm sorry, Norman, I've got to correct you on those. That's Quackworks in St. Canard. All oh, right, Quackworks in St. Canard, a town not far from Duxburg. Scrooge put his buddy, Lunch Pat McQuack, in charge. And, well, long story short, uh, Betty tries to do a hostile takeover of said building. And when I say hostile takeover, literally a really hostile and aggressive way, carving the building in some kind of crazy black ink. Hostile takeover, everybody. Magica Dispel calls it the slime, which just makes me think of Ghostbusters. Ghost Nappa! Gita, 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 Gita. But it sits in the corner. But anyhow. Uh, you can't fight the nerd wave, just try to ride it out. Yep. Uh, but anywho, uh, as we continue on, uh, we are told that two hours earlier, Scrooge McDuck has, well, is not happy with how Lunchpad is doing things in, um, where was it again? Uh, Qua... Saint... Quackworks. Yeah, at Quackworks, Quackworks. in St. Canar... Canard? Yeah, Canard. St. Canard. Yeah, in St. Canard. So, he takes the kids and goes to Quackworks, um, St. Canard, actually, yes. And mm -hmm. at the same time, too, we are following this one guy. Uh, I wish I remember his name, but... Fenton Crackshell. Oh, yes, Fenton. No, Fen Fenton. You're saying Phantom, which is... I I know it's hard to say, dude, but this is my childhood. i got to stand up for it. Represent? <laughs> yeah, what? Okay, it's cool. I mean, uh, Fenton is a character I know, too. Danny Phantom. <laughs> uh, but anywho... But anywho um, we, we follow Fenton here, and he goes to the house of Darkwing Duck, and he just goes there to ask for Launchpad McQuack's help to get Scrooge McDuck to tell him what's going on and get them to solve the problem, because Scrooge McDuck here is a problem solver. He solves problems, he fights crime, and does good, and takes money from the poor. Yay. Uh, whoa, dude. Uh, I Look, kid. unless we're talking about Mickey's Christmas Carol, I mean... I kid, I kid. <laughs> I just make a little joke. I joke with you. <laughs> yes, yes. I joke. But uh, but here the comic commits a grievous oh. injustice. How so? Well, fans have noticed some continuity errors. Case in point, Fenton and uh, Darkwing's alter ego have... Wow, even I'm having a little trouble. I barely, we barely get to see Darkwing out of costume sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Drake Gander, was it? Uh, Drake, I, I think so. I mean, uh, I did notice the comic here said his name once, but Drake Mallard. There, there you go. All right. <laughs> but anyway, Drake Mallard. Both he and Fenton have met in the show, so this comic treats them as a first-time introduction. And fans instantly call foul on that <laughs> because you have a continuity hiccup, it stands out. But then, Uncle Scrooge, Scrooge McDuck, he says, bless me, bagpipes. And I know I'm about to go into kinky territory, but I, this is my childhood, which might explain a few things. It's blow me, bagpipes. Blow me. <laughs> I mean... Really? I'm sure they censored it for a modern audience, but you kids today, you don't know how many double entendres were lit, released throughout the 80s. <clears throat> uh, yeah. But anywho, like, 
Silver mentioned, Scrooge goes to Darkwing's uh, home. And, well, I find this oddly convenient, you know? Like, it's too, too convenient. That they all come together so quickly? Yes. Well, uh, here's the thing I don't quite get. Launchpad is put in charge of this, basically, balloon company. Scrooge is pulling an Enron. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm-hmm. And yet he's living in the suburban home with his friend. It's like, shouldn't he have been tempted to live in a big estate or some such? I mean, at least put him in a high-rise apartment building, something like that. I mean, fit fit the situation for the company or something like that. I mean, it's also strange if you think about it, having... Well, I, I think the exact words from Scrooge here is, uh, that's the thing, I need a dummy corporation away from the city to secretly house some assets. That's why I put a dummy in charge. Wow. Was Scrooge ever this mean? Oh, oh, he's, he's always <laughs> been a cranky bun. I, I know, but calling Launchpad a dummy is... Was he always this mean? Well, let's see yeah. here. I'm thinking back to the DuckTales movie, which was a lot of fun, by the mm-hmm. by. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it? Du- Launchpad is trying forward ho, reverse ho. Mm-hmm. If you don't stop crashing, I'll give you the heave ho. <laughs> I mean, th- that is... He always had a short temper. I know, but that's a joke there because it like forward ho, reverse ho. It's like that kind of warranted the joke there. But this one here is like, you made a dummy company just to, you know, a dummy company at the same time too. It's not good. And having like, ain't Launch pet your buddy, and don't you really want someone who is competent enough to take care of said company? I mean, eh? Scrooge has always been just a little bit of a sourpuss. Yeah, but it, the first arc was the kids trying to worm their way into his heart, or at least getting over that awkward first impression, which I believe is going to be the same thing in the new Ducktales series, which I, stars David Tennant. I know. Yay! But I'm Oh, Safi, you you wound me. <clears throat> not o- not only do you not give a fig, but you give a half-hearted woo. You see the corner, young lady. No, 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 but Smithy, like Overwatch. Oh, but anyway, anyway, still you. Wait, there are butts. Not anymore. <laughs> Aww. Uh, but anywho, so yeah, Scrooge is a bit of a sourpuss and he's always, uh, he's just gonna be a sourpuss. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just the way, it's just his way. True, but I always thought of Scrooge in the later episodes to be, well, kind to his friend, but always, um, picky with what he does. Like, oh, you want to borrow money? Okay, you can, but you have to give me a 50% interest in it. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, He's fun to be around, but don't borrow money. That's the rule. A loan shark. Yep. And, well, um, just moving on forward, everybody arrives at the Duckwing Estate and everybody meets. Suddenly, we're greeted to Spooky Scary Town? Spooky Scary Skeletons and shivers down your spine. And here's the problem that I have. What? How? From where? Oh, are we back to A E I O U and Y? Oh, oh, probably I don't know, but uh, I'm just going to try and move along. And if you guys, have, if you have something to add in, please, please interject. I will compliment that the artists really draw a nightmare town. Oh yeah, that, that is true. This looks like something that would happen in a Disney cartoon, where it's all dark and dark and scary mm-hmm. and moody. It is. It, it does strike a scary image. But here's the thing. How did it all happen? I mean, if you said magic, like, uh, you got me there. But still. Anyway, um, spooky scary town. Uh, the furniture goes ghosty and tries to catch our heroes. Goslin and... Oh, uh, let's kid? see here. What, what was his name? <laughs> oh, my memory, my memory is failing me on this one. I never really liked him because he always had this thick, nasally, sounded like he had a perpetual cold. <laughs> Hoover? Hoover? Something like that? Probably. Must jar my memory. 
But the question is, he's he's Darkwing's next door neighbor's kids. Why is he there? Uh, it's a Disney cartoon. Oh, kids are always at the, at the kids' house. But anyway, um, Fen- Fenton here gets um, drenched in slime and honker, con- honker. Oh, all right, honker. honker Sorry, yeah. I'm interrupting a lot, but it's honker. All right, no problem. Hungers. So anyway, um, Fenton here gets covered in slime and drags away into the depths of the unknown. Scrooge McDuck here schools lunch pad and they argue for a bit. And the reason why they need Fenton back is because he's the only one who can pilot the Gizmo Duck armor well. Um, I remember any Tom, Dick or Harry could pilot the armor, but Fenton was the only one who was good at it. And he, was, he was the tr- the true hero and... Uh... And they need him to solve whatever's happening. True. And, well, <laughs> uh, Darkwing here has a flashback of his adventure with Gizmo Duck and is surprised to s- say that, huh, that guy was Gizmo Duck? I would have not seen it. Hmm. Like, oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. They, they have sort of a Batman Superman relationship. <laughs> Probably. Oh, well, Captain America Iron Man. Yeah, I'd go more with a light-hearted Batman Superman. I mean, as far as I know, uh, let's see. Hmm. Would Dar- so Gizmo Duck would be Iron Man? Probably. One, Gizmo, Gizmo Duck has not made a mess of the entire world like, uh, like Tony Stark has. True. <laughs> yeah. If you want to know where I stand on Civil War, well, <laughs> there you go. Uh, but anyway, um, carrying on, uh, Oh, I'll carry on about this, all right. We've got a long time until Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor hit the screen. Yep, but anyway, um, carrying on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Scrooge here, uh, Bickers and, Fen- uh, and Lunchpad tells Darkwing to say that, uh, to reveal his secret to uh, Scrooge that I'm Darkwing Duck. And Scrooge's reaction here is priceless. This puny fella is Darkwing! <laughs> At least that shows that Darkwing has the reputation. True. Uh, but anyway, after um, some slight squabble, we are shown the villain at their hideout. And they're spying, like villains do. And we are greeted to the first wave of villains. Um, I think we are greeted to Magica and the Legion of Female Evildoers and Ink. Or uh, what? What was his name, Seppi? The Ink Blot. Ah, uh, the Ink Blot. <laughs> so anyway, um, the head of you'd think you'd remember that. I don't. <laughs> you should. Probably, but anyway, um, uh, we are greeted to the genius in Ducktales, uh, Gizmo. No, 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 Gizmo. Ah, uh, buttons. I forget his name. But anyway, um, we're greeted to him at. <laughs> Wow, Silver. Did you just say buttons? You yeah. did just say buttons. How could you say Norman, that to an innocent such language. <laughs> language. I'm sorry. Language. Oh, the you. fellow's name is G- is Gyro. Oh yes, Gyro. Now I remember. All right. Anyway, um, they invite Gyro to Duck Wings' uh, location and try to find a countermeasure to get Fenton back. And Gosling reveals that hey, um, we have this, so maybe you can do something out of it. And he does. Yeah, this this part I don't remember. Goslin is hanging on to Gizmo Duck's armor, but I don't remember him losing it. It must have been in an earlier comic. Yeah, it, it's probably in the comics. But anyway, um, I'm just skipping through. Um, Gizmo here repairs the armor and have a few words. Suddenly, the Beagle Boys and Megavolt appears. Dang, dang, dang! They have a fight, and they are defeated. So they fight, and they fight, and they fight, and they fight. To power up, they have the e- energy tank from Mega Man. No, not really. It's just some black inky goo that transformed them into monsters. The heck? Well, this is the running theme of the comic. The bad guys are all powered up by slime. Which, again, I'm getting a strong Ghostbusters vibe. Silver, I'm going to say this. If it worked in Power Rangers the movie, it's going to be working in here, too. Ugh. Look, I'm sorry, but you don't have Ivan Ooze on hand. <laughs> yes. And let's be honest, that Power Rangers movie was silly fun, but 
Well, I, let's just say I wasn't a big fan of the new Power Rangers movie, so yeah, I'll take the nostalgia. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, our heroes are defeated, and our villains are commanded to go back to HQ. And we end our first episode with Scrooge talking to Agent 44 and having a plan. Yeah. The, the city is doomed, by the way. Yeah. Yay! Oh, wait, sorry. Boo, got my reactions mixed up. <laughs> yeah. So we move on to part two where the art style changes a bit and certain part of the art is different. Well, it's drawn by the Darkwing Duck crew, which... True, but I've mentioned before, uh, James Silvani drew both comics. That's the thing. Like, um, part one, uh, James Silvani pages, um, one, fifteen and twenty-two, inks two and four, while Jose Massaroli pencils two and fourteen. But still, the art is still by the same person. And the colors here, like, in the first chapter, we are greeted to a very dark and bleak world. Well, here it's just like, mm, it's a bit cloudy with a chance of meatball. Ah, oh, that's someone else's childhood you're talking about now. I'm a, I'm a bit of an old codger for that, but... Wait, cloudy with a chance of meatball? Yeah, it's a TV series. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> I've hit a nerve. Uh, I think she's thinking about the movie. Oh. But anyway, uh, but anyway, we are in Duck Wheel. Uh, we continue on into Darkwing Duck Issue 17, where our heroes squabble for a bit, and Scrooge McDuck has a plan to kind of solve this problem. And Duckwing Duck interjects saying, Hey, this is my town, and we do it my way. And the way we do it is what you said. So, yeah. Well, Darkwing also, has always been famous for his ego. Not true that. I also, do remember that. Also, before we continue on, I need to state this right now. Huey Goslin for life. Okay, that is all. <laughs> Why Huey and Goslin? I mean, she's they're Yo. literally they're literally the same characters. <laughs> I, that's, there, there's a moment in the comic where he's like, "I've never seen a girl do that before. Oh I kind of like it." <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, like I ship it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, next page, our heroes crash into. The Quackworks building. And well, <laughs> Scrooge is angry in this one. Like, he is very pissed off. Schools that, oh, if there's infiltration, I hate to see what, uh, breaking entry looks like. Yeah, a fair point by the McTuck. Yep. And well, they see a box called Secret Plans, open it, and inside it is Quackerjack, a villain from Dark Swing's, uh, repertoire. Before they can say anything, it's the slime. Oh no! It's coming out from the Walter filter and they hide under the table. Which is a good plan, by the way. Unfortunately for them, uh, Quacker Jack is drenched in said ink or slime, whatever you want to call it, and is affected. And now he's going to run on a muck. And at the same time, too, we are greeted by two other villains, uh, Mega Vault and Hydro Liquidator. Yes. And uh, liquidator. Yep. And I'm sorry, guys, you you're, you keep invoking my childhood. I'm gonna just keep correcting. It's I know it's annoying. <laughs> no problem. I'm go, I'm going full fanboy here. Oh, no problem. And the thing is, uh, Darkwing Duck says, "Do your worst. This is the fight I've been waiting for." <laughs> and Scrooge McDuck says, "One, you'll lose." Just yanks him away. That's the funny thing for this. For at least the first three quarters of the story, I'd say. Scrooge McDuck is the one sort of in control and with the power in this team up. Mm -hmm. Everyone's following his lead. He's calling the shots no matter what. Darkwing doesn't really come into his own until the final part. Yep. And I think the reason here is that Scrooge has age and experience on his side. He knows when to pick a fight. He knows when to do stuff. And Darkwing here is the uh, new kid on the block, per se, when it comes to this kind of things, which is not fair because Darkwing here is quote unquote the Batman of this universe, so he should have a bit of cred when it's needed. Or he could be the Flash, where he's just going through and not thinking about stuff, probably. So anyway, um, next page, our other part heroes, Huey, Dewey, Louis Goslin, Quacker, no, not Quackers, uh, Honkers, and uh, who is the uh, Duck? Pink girl, 
the niece to. Oh, Webigail? Yeah, Webigail. Webigail? Yeah. Webigail, a nice pet, goes looking for the source of the evil. So, the... Webigail? Why, what? Yep. That's, that's Webby's first name, Webigail? Yep. I did not know that. Then again, I've only seen two episodes in my life. Yep. Oh, these kids today. <laughs> yep. Well, anyway, um, after I discovering... I complain. <laughs> uh, Old man. Uh, Sorry. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, after discovering a cell phone or a satellite phone, they invent a, as uh, Honker says, the world's first ultra high tech 100% accurate dowsing rod. Yeah. Where big girl's impressed. Because she says so. So impressive. Mm. So, Safi, you wanna, you wanna ship it? Ship Not it like really. a FedEx? Yeah. Ship it like a FedEx? <laughs> so. Ironically, my boyfriend works for FedEx. Dude. So no. Uh, but anyway, but anyway. Uh, suddenly a disembodied voice which belongs to a lamppost gone sentient tries to stop them. And Goslin kills it. Hmm. Oh, she kills it, I and mean, she throws a. Ro- I threw a rock at it. There, there's another. There's another childhood reference for y'all. Well, but uh, I can't breathe. But I'm not. I'm still not totally sure how I work yet. Yeah, you have to have lungs to breathe. True, but if you gain sentient, like you know what, I'm not gonna even. No, no. Uh, let's go to the other crew where our heroes are scaling up the wall, which is a better idea. They should have done this from the very beginning. Unfortunately for them, the wall is covered with plants and if I do remember right, Duckwing Duck has a plant enemy by the name of, I forgot what his name is, gosh dang it. Bushroot. Bushroot, yes, thank you. So anyway, um, Bushroot tries to stop them and gobble them up and Duckwing Duck pulls out his gas, uh, gas launcher, grenade launcher or gas gun. Uh, gas gun, you got it. Yeah, gas gun and... Shoots it at bush root and they kind of win the day and continue up climbing and we go back to team B again and this is the part where this comic here is all over the place. It is where we start jumping between the teams rather f- frantically. You're not really getting a sense of who's accomplishing anything at the moment. Gyro, Scrooge and Darkwing are, are pretty much failing to infiltrate Quackworks. While the kids are underground, uh, skulking. Though I do, I do love the, the meta humor of Huey, Dewey, and Louie saying, well, yeah, we do this at least once a month. <laughs> you guys don't explore caves? Why don't you guys explore <laughs> caves? Yeah. Oh, by you the guys way, are weird. There, there's a part where I kind of, uh, skip over and that's the part where, who's red, by the way? Huey? Or Dewey? Or he's with Louie? <laughs> Huey. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's one part I never bothered to distinguish because they are the same character. True. But anyway, um, Huey here says that, wow, never seen a girl do something like that before. I like it. And Goslin says, get used to it, Red. Like, oh wow. Hmm. No wonder you ship it like a FedEx. Ship, but, ship, 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 Sonora. Here's one of the themes in this comic that doesn't really get explored. Uh, Webby and Gosselin are not really connecting all that well. They kind of argue a lot. Really? I don't and see so you, that. They argue just a little bit. Huh. I shouldn't say a lot. It's just a little bit. But, you know, I guess I guess they're competing for who's the most the popular. The better girl. <laughs> the better girl. Safi, I'm going to have to quiz you about that in a little bit. Uh, okay. But... But Launchpad is worried that his friend, his two sets of best friends aren't getting along, and he might have to choose, and he never has to face that choice. True, but at the same time, too, the, the conflict here seems to be a red herring for Launchpad. Like, does he really need to do this? Does he really need to, um, what you call this, face this problem? Like. He's a grown adult. He can be friends with whoever he wants. If his friends doesn't respect that, then they're no friends of his. Well, we never really explore if he has to make that choice or, you know, if he had to choose between who he saves and who he has to let go. There, that's There's a conflict. True, but... Should I say or should I go? 
but that never comes to be because he pretty much fails both parties. Mm-hmm. And well, um, before kind of shutting down the machine that's pumping evil um, ink or evil slime everywhere, they think that they should get a sample of it, which is a good plan, which is a good plan. And I think this is the part where you say Webby and Goslin are a bit, uh, are fighting or arguing, and Webby just asks, why aren't you helping them? And Goslin says, I volunteer, but they say they were good on their own, so she didn't stop them. And yeah, this is where the part where Launchpad kind of has that internal monologue conflict of should I pick A or should I pick B? How are they doing each other? Like, oh no. Suddenly, there's a sh- earthquake rupture and cuts to the A crew again. And, well, this is the interesting part. They land into an office building. As Darkwing Duck might say, this is the most boring place on Earth. This is my old office at Quackworks. I gave up being Darkwing and became another corporate drone. Seems so long ago now. Which is kind of... I'm assuming that happened in the comics, because I don't remember a cartoon about that. Yeah, it's comics. Me neither. Yeah. But you don't... You don't... You've only seen two episodes. Well, either way, I wouldn't have assumed this. Well, I'm I'm going to just say and assume that whatever happens here is happening in the comic. And one of the things here is that Darkwing says, I wanted to protect Goslin. I thought she'll get a normal life that way. Uh, Believe me, it was a mistake. And by saying this, like, he stopped being Darkwing, become an office drone just to protect Goslin because, you know, being a superhero is dangerous. And Scrooge says, I don't know. Sitting down and earning an honest dollar all proves a good life for loved ones. It might be the first smart thing I've heard you say. Which is kind of true because um the way that Scrooge work is an honest living. I remember the first episode where he got his first quarter, was it, by selling newspapers? And then he got scammed out of it. True. And I do remember that he doesn't really know how to ride a bicycle. Remember that episode? Or was well, that, a movie? that one I need a refresher on. <coughs> but here's the funny thing. He's talking about an honest living as they stand in the middle of his dummy corporation. <laughs> Irony! Uh, before we can, sorry, before they can, uh, trade semantics, they hear a scream of help from, um, Gizmo Duck. And before they can help him, the villain arrives from a platform. A really big, shiny platform. Wow. Villainy Entrance 101. True, but at the same time, too, you have to wonder, like, how are they not squish? Actually, I find funny is that they were probably just up there, Oh, can we go in yet? No, no, we gotta be dramatic. <laughs> yeah, 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 timing, timing, timing. And they're like, yeah, the race up right. Perfect timing, non-rehearsed. How do you like that, Scrooge? <laughs> uh, but anyway, the villain compiles up, and the bad guy here drowns them, or tries to drown them in ink. Um... I think Scrooge by Ducks point out that, haha, you won't trick us like that, you fiend, we are smarter than you. Unfortunately, they didn't look to the right. Um, Gizmo Duck is drenched in ink and is going AWOL or going to destroy them with highly, highly dangerous weaponry like a Catholic machine gun, a stick of TNT, a bomb, hammer, cannon, chainsaw, and whatever else you can think of. That sounds like a commercial jingle. Bomb, hammer, chainsaw, at Lowe's. Available at Walmart. Well, at least it ain't at the Home Depot. (laughs) That place is a Uh, ripoff. But anyway, the bad guys kind of talk like, um, shouldn't we go down there and, you know, show what we got and take them out? And Ink Blob says, no, no, we'll see what the Ink can really do because we're evil. And it seems that the guys are huddling and scheming, but I think they're just saying what this, what a good plan it is. While the girls, on the other hand, says that, oh, they're scheming and plotting. We'll just wait our time. We'll just wait our time. Which is, Sefi, this is where I'd like to get your input. Magica and her cohorts all seem to assume that they'll, they won't betray one another because they're, I guess, a sisterhood of evil. 
what, what, what's your take on this? Would female characters be more naturally inclined to not betray one another? <laughs> I'm really putting you on the spot with this. Still, the uproarious laughter is maybe an answer in and of itself. Oh, trust me. Trust me. A group of girls. Trust me. Girls towards one another, they can be total... You went through the words. I'm gonna say it. They're told. That's not a word. To each other. <laughs> well, well, if you really do have a strong bond with like a, you know, with other women, like, you know, you have a motherly relationship with your, you know, if you're, if your daughter mother relationship is strong, yeah, that, that, you know, no betrayal and whatnot. Like, you know, sisterly relationship, but, didn't Magica, like, pick up these girls out of timelines and stuff to form the evil? Like... Yeah, it's sort of predicated on evil, so I don't know if you can just say, oh, we won't betray one another because we're the ladies. It's like, what? No! You're the bad Just... guys! Okay, a group of four evil women who have no bond with each other in any way whatsoever. Yeah, there's bound to be some, um... Conflict. True that. Uh, but talking about conflicts, how is our hero going to solve this problem? Fighting a big giant evil Gizmo Duck. While Darkwing tries to do something, he fails. He might be crushed. He might be eaten. Who knows? Suddenly the roof crashes in. And we're greeted to our hero? Mama Crackshell. Yep. And this is the part where, oh wow, Mama Crackshell has, oof, that, that boy is whipped. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not the, it's not the most complimentary presentation for Fenton. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. At, at the end of his introduction, he actually got his act together and, uh, and even lectured his mom into shape. True. That, I, I think I remember that. But anyway, talking about lecturing, um, Mama, uh, Fenton, lectures the evil out of him. Uh, those are the two words I don't think I imagine saying or imagine me hearing out of my mouth. Lecture the evil out of him. Hmm. I'm just going to try and go back to ponies and see if I can word it there. Fluttishai lectures the evil out of Discord. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, she didn't really... Twilight might give it a go. Yeah, I I think Twilight has a solution, which was lecture, right? Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I'm going to lecture her. Yay. Uh, but anyway, uh, back to Darkwing Duck. After Gizmo Duck turns good, uh, the bad guy says, you know what? Uh, things don't seem to be working. Let's just take them down for realsies. Uh, they fight a bit and they execute plan B, which is, let's get out of here. Let's jump out of the window and crash? Sort of. How? Well, it's Gizmo Duck. He can catch everyone with all his multiple mechanical appendages. True, but at the same time, didn't, uh, how did they crash? Like, didn't Gizmo Duck, uh, like, Gizmo Duck here, he should be working, but, eh. Sorry about that. Uh, still getting my bearings back. So, yeah, they're not seriously hurt until they discover that the kids were drenched in slime and they have turned into the greatest evil in Disney. Maleficent's dragon, Monstro, um, and the devil. I think he's a proper Chernabog. name. Ah, yes, thank you. Chernabog. Night on Bold Mountain. Awesome animation. Yep. And Especially with new ugly harpy ladies. Yep. <laughs> uh, that one, I remember that one. And also, um, who was his name? Quackers? No, no, um, Honkers. Honker. Honkers becoming the big Honker. giant. The big bad giant. Yeah, I'm not really sure what Honker is meant to represent. He's just, oh wait, there was a Disney giant. Yeah, yeah I'm just, that Mickey I'm, brought down. I'm referring oh, to yeah, that. Oh yeah, I remember him. I'm referring to that. And, well, um, we shift into DuckTales Part 6, Dangerous Currency Part 3. And suddenly, what? Please explain this to me. What? Suddenly what? Okay, uh, suddenly, last page. 
last okay. page, um, we see that the kids have turned into bad guys and they're running amok while Launchpad is running away from them. Then the next page, we are greeted by Gizmo Duck catching Goslin and Pink Duck Girl. And how? What am I missing Webby. here? Thank you, Webby. Apparently, we missed an action sequence where I guess Darkwing swooped up and grabbed the girls. Yeah, but I was so confused with this one. Actually, what I find funny is that Goslin said, did you and Gizmo Duck plan that? Maybe. <laughs> Oh, wow. You know what? This is something I cannot forgive. Like, okay, one of two things happened here. Either the scan that I'm reading from here does not include set panel or set panel doesn't exist. Yeah, it, I I figured set panel just didn't exist uh, and got a little bitter over it because... There's nothing so frustrating as, oh yeah, there's this total action, the action scene going on off screen. Right, Godzilla? <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I remember the word I was looking for. Sequential art. I just prefer to call it a tease. <laughs> won't go any further than that because uh, there might be kids watching. Buttons. Anyway. And we've already talked Norman about... Norman language! Oh, you pig. <laughs> uh, but anywho... You swine, you uncultured swine. Okay, sorry about that, Captain America. Punish the heathen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, after uh, saving the girls, the group retreats back to Duckburg. Yay. Life is like a, Life is like a hurricane. Okay, okay, okay. Here here in Duckburg. Duckburg. No, you can't fight it. Just go with the tide. Uh, Race cars, lasers, airplanes, it's, it's a, a duck, duck blur. blur. Okay, we it's... need to work on our timing. Aww. Uh, Sorry, so just I... let me sing it. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. You expect me not to sing along? I, I claim childhood rights. <laughs> but any... I solve a mystery. <laughs> oh, me uh, by history. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I'm going to stop you guys there. If you guys want to hear us sing five bucks to the Patreon, there. <laughs> okay. Uh, but <laughs> never miss a, never miss a chance, Norman. eh, Norman? Yep, I learned from Scrooge. <laughs> Gives Norman five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're back in Duckburg where uh, Gizmo is trying to fix the Gizmo Duck armor. And... While they're doing that, Scrooge here reveals that he has a sample of the slime. Duckwing Duck is afraid of said slime because, well, he has every right to because that thing turns people evil. But the word here that Scrooge says that I've seen what it does in the hands of villains. In this world, they are people and commodities. A commodity is only a threat when it's in the hand of the wrong people. Wow. It's a rather oversimplified way of looking at things. True, but still, wow. Uh, anyway. At least it ain't a calamity. Yep. Anyway, he gives Gyro the sample and they analyze it. And we, we are shown here that Darkwing here is a man of science. Well, he knows a bit of science. And looking into the microscope, he sees the faces of evil. Evil! Evil! <laughs> E-Man, I will destroy you! Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, I'm a full, I'm on a full nostalgia kick this review. Yep. Anyway, mm -hmm. after being spooked out by said evil, um, we are seen here, okay, we, we, here's a part where I like. The police force of Darkburg is trying to stop the evil, uh, monsters. But I apparently fail because they're too big and they're not getting paid enough for this. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, I don't think that anything of that is covered in the police handbook. Giant monsters attack. You you really don't have a playbook for that. You mean you they don't teach you in the police academy? Da, 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 da. See for nostalgia. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, our heroes are given a device that reverts our bad guys or reverts our children into children. But the only cons is it's only one shot, so don't miss. 
And guess what? They didn't miss. And this happens all in one panel. What? Yeah, that that threat is shut down like lickety split. It's almost a non-event. I know. At least give us two panels. But still, <laughs> but still, uh, they they say that okay, um, this device go shoot at a monster. They revert back. How do we know? Just because. Anyway, um, the boys here apologize for going. Uh, monster, and they say that uh, it's not your fault, it's the stupid slime's fault. Even the great and powerful uh, Gizmo Duck is affected too. And the big question that is ev- everybody's mind is, where the heck have you been? It's been a year, but for Fenton here, it's only been a couple of minutes. So, what happened? And he just says that suddenly Magical Dispel comes to him from some kind of magical portal thing, kidnapped him, and does what? That's the only part that I don't understand. What happened? What does he do? Well, uh, she apparently yanked him through. Time, true, but... But somehow he escaped. They kind of skipped that part. But capture him for what reason? Like, they didn't really say anything to the plan. I mean, I, I'm no evil genius here, but... When you execute a plan, especially kidnapping the accountant for Scrooge McDuck, how, what is the plan here? Like, you want to... Okay, to, I, sorry, go ahead. I, can, I can actually explain this to you. Uh, at least I think I can. <clears throat> you remember... You think? I think. You, re, you mentioned that dime that Scrooge won, mm-hmm. uh, his very first Ernie. Well, he never spent that dime. It's actually locked away... In his, uh, in his treasure vault. And it's the number one source of, it's sort of his good luck charm. It's the symbol of his wealth. The whole of the vault will be torn away before he gives up his number one dime. Mm-hmm. Fenton, apparent, she doesn't know he's Gizmo Duck. Fenton is meant to authenticate that's the number one dime. Because if Magica can get that, it's proof that she's beaten him. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah, but still, it's not clear. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, okay, anyway, Deus Ex Machina suddenly appears where the villain's plan is, well, revealed in a 12th panel spread. Where, you know what, Silver, take this one because I'm really... Uh... So, Gizmo Duck, because he got locked in the slime and has been changed by it, his armor now has a connection. Which means basically it's got the inside track on Magicka's, uh, history. She, which again, it flat out says do not team up with a traitorous male. Team up with awesome female master criminals because those are so much more trustworthy. No. 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 <laughs> but basically, Magicka planned on go on teaming up with the villains to take down her greatest rival. They set up shop in St. Canard, however, uh, because they discovered the Dummy Corporation. When they got there, however, they discovered this slime underneath the city. And as and seeing it mutate her uh, crow servant, Poe, they, uh. they devised... Yep. <laughs> I, I guess he's a raven then. Nevermore. They devised Never this more. new plan. And so they've recruited this inkblot fellow, who I don't uh, no, the Phantom Blot. And then Fenton was just taken to sort of authenticate the win to make it clear that they had taken everything Scrooge had, even his last dime. Which is kind of funny. I, my father always quoted a mentor of his who said, never take their last dollar. So I, I guess the saying changes depending on who you ask. Basically, this armor gives away the entire exposition between behind Magicka's plan except how she recruited the Phantom Blot. Yes. However, every this is one thing I don't understand. All the kids and the even the adults are looking at Darkwing like, is this it? I mean we're facing every bad guy we've ever we've ever tangled with. And they're all enhanced by slime. They know this just from the fights they've had up until now. They didn't need the, the presentation from the uh armor to know this. I mean, I guess it drives it home, but they know it right off the bat. 
True, but I I think the exposition of explaining the master plan. But uh, here's the issue that I have with this part here where, okay, I kind of understand why you want to explain the plan to the audience because the audience is lost, but it's done poorly. That's, That's what I can say. I understand the thing that they're trying to portray or trying to convey, but I don't think it's a really good plan or it's a really good way to do it. Like, eh, it speeds up the whole thing. I kind of understand, but it could have been done rather elegantly than this. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Um, our heroes look to Darkwing and Darkwing says, Let's get dangerous. Oh yeah, I was going to say at the beginning of the review, Norman, you missed a great opportunity to say let's get dangerous before we start talking about the comics i'm sorry but anyway you should be yeah i am <laughs> but anyway um they devise a plan for or they devise an armor or add-on for gizmo duck that has him wear a really huge cannon and <laughs> this, I, I like this conversation i like this conversation uh darkwing just casually just asks Scrooge here, why do we bring them along? Scrooge replies, the kids? Yeah, and long story short, um, Darkwing explains that Goslin does whatever she wants, while the Scrooge here brings them along because he wants to get closer to them. And with his adventuring along uh, the world, he, it doesn't give him much time to spend time with the kids and also teach them life lessons in, well, how do they put this? Uh, they, he teaches them real world experiences. Yes. That's one way to do it. <laughs> Near death experiences. Yeah. I mean, let's, there, there's giving your kids life experience and then there's being like, ha, nearly kill yourselves for my amusement. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the funny. Trolestia uh, argument. But anyway, uh, the bad guys come to Duckburg, run amok, and uh, heroes decide, you know what? Let's do this. Let's Take them down. Um, Darkwing and Launchpad flies through, uh, flies to the location and take them down with a squirt gun. Yes, a very powerful squirt gun that is. Uh, I thought it was the updated gas gun. Well, true, but still, essentially, it's the squirt gun with the antidote. Yes. Now, how is it that screw that Darkwing can say "suck gas, evildoers," but Scrooge can't say "blow me bad pipes"? Really? I don't really? know. Really? I call shenanigans. And, uh, well, the, 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 the takedown of the villain is slightly better, but not great. They're taken down with one shot. Not even an action scene, just one shot. <sighs> it's just one punch, man. At least one punch man one gave a really good, uh, at least one punch man gave a really good fight. Or the villains tried to give a good fight anyway. Um, the slime uh, reaches Duxburg and it infects the whole town and machinery or whatever it is and turn them evil. And Scrooge is worried that his money, oh no, his money is turned into an uh, inanimate object where he's basically beaten. Uh, yes, the bad guys won. Oh no. But they haven't got his last dime yet. Yes. Um, a symbolic di- victory. True, true. Gizmo and his crew activate the, I want to just call, I'm just going to call it a proto cannon. Yeah, it just activates a proto cannon and shoots it up into the sky and activates some kind of portal. Uh, they, not even knowing what it will do, create some kind of portal from another dimension, revealing Negaduck. Da, da, da. I appreciate the da da da. I wasn't sure you were going to commit. <laughs> you know, got to commit. Yes. Uh, and there he is, the evil, the nega duck, the bad guy, Darkwing Duck. Yeah. Darkwing's true enemy. Yep. Himself, but evil. And Morgana Le Fay, which is equally confusing. Reason? Well, one, I, I didn't know that she was in. L- whatever dimension he was stuck in. I'm assuming, again, this was a comic event. 
And But if she were stuck, I'm kind of surprised that Darkwing would just sort of be so chill. He had a major crush. In fact, I've heard that uh, had the series continued, she would have become Mrs. Darkwing Duck. Ooh, nice. Uh, but anyway, um, we continue on to part four in Darkwing Duck issue 18, the final chapter. Oh, wow, this one. This one, Danger <laughs> Currency ish part four, the final one. And... <coughs> After revealing, You're just the, not feeling it. I don't know. Like, let's just go through it. Like, uh, the after revealing the bad guy, which is Mega Duck, and Darkwing being surprised, like, oh, uh, Morgana, what, 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 what's going on? You're seeing other wings behind my back. <laughs> oh gosh, she's got a wing thing. Really? She has? Not really, but I, I can be inappropriate. Oh, you. But anyway, I'm just winging it. Uh, but anyway, he explains that the originator of the slime is me. It's been me. I was behind the slime. And he uh, crashes Darkwing's plane and uh, shows him a brief history of what happened after being captured by... I got no idea. What, what were they captured by? <laughs> well, they weren't They weren't necessarily captured. So here, here's what I can glean. Mm-hmm. Back in the original Darkwing series, Negaduck made his debut not as his own character, but Darkwing's evil side. It got split by uh, by one of Megawatt's devices. Negaduck would later return as just an independent character. I never really figured that out. But basically, Negaduck got hit by the exact same device, which made him, but since he's pure evil... He b- became an evil and slightly less evil version of himself. And apparently he get, he kept getting hit by it, so he was basically sub-divided into just sort of these particles, which eventually came together again to form the slime. However, his core self was banished to another dimension, sort of an empty St. Cernard. And that's where Morgana... Is it Morgana or Morrigan? I forget. Morgana, from what I read. Okay. Well, that's where Morgana popped in because she had been duking it out with some interdimensional horror. Oh, I see. Uh, Duck Cthulhu. Duck Cthulhu. And so uh, she wound up there trapped with him. And so he's been controlling the slime, bringing out the worst in everyone, waiting for his own restoration. And he's using uh, Morgana as a as sort of leverage, uh, basically tempting Darkwing to let her back in. But he can't rescue her unless Negaduck is brought through as well. So this is where kind of what Darkwing and Scrooge were talking about earlier. You have exactly one life. You can't subdivide it between heroism and civilian life. You've only got one life to live. Mm -hmm. And so Darkwing has to make a choice. Suddenly, while Scrooge has been sort of lecturing and criticizing for the whole arc... Now it's Darkwing's story as he makes the choice between his life as Drake Mallard and his life as Darkwing Duck. And saying, no, I only have one life and I want more Morgana to be a part of both. Yeah, and with that, he Darkwing rescues Morgana. And uh, you know what? Uh, Nega Duck tags along by holding Morgana's hand. Like, couldn't Morgana kick him, for God's sakes? Eh... I, well, let's see. We're we're about to get into even odder questions, so who could? We'll save it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, um, they got Duggy's back, and he is the slime. He is controlling everything, and this is the line I enjoy. How about that? This time for me to say something I never would, Darkwing Duck. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I just like it when a bad guy says something like that. Yeah, just to make your just to make your day even worse. Yep. So to push the point that he's in control of the slime, he merges with it and captures everyone. And I mean literally everyone. The bad guys, the kids, Scrooge, and uh Gizmo Duck. And well <coughs> he says that he was in control of the whole thing and reveals to Phantom Blob that Morgana was playing him all along. And the Phantom Blob does not like that. No, sir. Oh, no. And, yeah, he wants revenge. Revenge! And this is my favorite part. Uh, Scrooge McDuck's 
calls upon Agent 44 and tells him to initiate the plan. Next page. Donald! <laughs> yep, Donald Duck's in this. Yay! Yay! I love this. I love Donald. Um, I think I'm back, Norman. I sense your, I sense your withholding. Let it flow through you. Uh, I, I'm just happy on the inside. I, I'm just gonna keep it there because what is he doing? What is his plan? I don't understand. Well, the argument is that since Negaduck came back into the world, the slime is actually less potent. It doesn't make people evil now, which seems a little plot convenient. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Donald has basically encouraged everyone to fight back and raise a ruckus. So we get uh, guest shots galore of various characters from both DuckTales and Darkwing Duck. I know we see Herb and the like. Uh, Ducksworth, the butler, Granny, Fenton's girlfriend. Let's see, Flintheart Glomgold, good yeah. to see him. Ah, the professor. Daisy Duck. I was kind of surprised to see both Bubba and the genie kid from the DuckTales I movie. I know. I don't know who the elderly uh, Mallard is. I got no idea. But here's the thing. Um, what's going on? Like, what is... Donald saying, like, I don't understand this part here. Like, what is even going on? Like, why are they, um, for lack of a better word, stomping around? They're basically beating back the slime, diminishing Negaduck's power. That's the theory, anyway. Basically, it's to, it's to sort of force Negaduck to accept uh, Phantom Blot's proposition to merge. Which, again, we're in slash fake territory. <laughs> Uh, well, so, yeah. And, and before they m- merge, Inkblop here wants to meet with, um, uh, Magica and tells her that either you team up or you're gonna have one really, very angry and powerful enemy. The choice is yours. So, do you join us or do you what? And she says, let's team up. And yeah, they merge into one very, very Evil, powerful team. Evil. Evil. And Darkwing says that, oh, uh, they're going to come back. The question is just when? And yeah, uh, don't need to wait for long because they're um, counterattacking now, which is, oh my, um, that's not a good situation. They're surrounded by villains. The villains are kicking the butts. And because of the slime, they can appear Anywhere, including Scrooge's vault. Yay! It seems that uh, Magica and the Bigly Boys are having a good time in the pool of money, which is feasibly impossible to swim. Peter Griffin shows us that. As he breaks his neck. (laughs) I know! (laughs) Uh, uh, But anyway, conveniently, Morgana explains to Darkwing that she put a spell on Negaduck just in case he came back. and, And the only way to... Trigger state spell is to hit him with the truth. And the truth is... Darkwing fights his way to Negaduck and just flat out says, you have allies and lackeys, but you have no friends. And that apparently hurts Negaduck's feelings for some reason. Oh, which I, which I find kind of baloney. The guy has always held a certain contempt for those connections. And here we are, here we are, folks. No matter what, we can't get away from Friendship is Magic's themes. I know! Ah. I think that's why you should see Spoonie's review of uh, Final Fantasy XIII. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this for too long, where whenever the power of friendship is involved, I'm just thinking Twilight Sparkle just... Uh, giving the lowdown slap to whatever bad guy is going. Like, oh, a uh, big giant gold monster um, not getting defeated. Oh, you know what solved this? The power of friendship! Is it wrong that I'm thinking of Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged? Same thing, too. All right, which one of y'all didn't believe in friendship hard enough? <laughs> but, but anyway... Doctor, give him 50 cc's of friendship, stat! 
<laughs> uh, but anyway, after being re- uh, being hit with the truth, uh, Negaduck is sucked back into the portal. Unfortunately for the rest of the bad guys, since they're merged with him, uh, they're getting sucked back too. Oh no! So yeah. they're all gonna sit in an empty Saint Canard, I believe it is. Probably yes. Yeah. It seems that way with Evil Cthulhu behind them. Sorry, Evil Duck Cthulhu. Evil Tuktulu. Yes. Uh, and the day is saved once again by Darkwing Duck and the Scrooge. They have a picnic, everybody's having fun, and they plan on how to split lunch pad, I think, or plan a party. What? I think, I think it's a party. We never really get, lunch pad never has to choose between lives. True that, true that. And Scrooge and uh, Darkwing shake hands, and the end, everybody's happy. Except for the villains. Oh yeah, the, the villains are with Duck Tulu. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's kind of funny. The, the heroes should be really happy. They they eliminated like ninety nine point nine percent of their rogues gallery. I know. To an end of a comic arc, to have everyone get their happy ending. Like Darkwing here gets the girl. Um, Scrooge still has his money, and everybody's uh, like. Happily ever after kind of situation. It's great. Um, looks like, uh, Fenton is back in the armor and he's not going anywhere. Um, and I mentioned before, Morgana is hooking up with Darkwing. Yay! Gosling has a mother now. Awesome. Quite possible. Yep. And comic ends. Unfortunately for this comic and for this happy ending, um, in all honesty, it killed, like you mentioned, it killed off 99% of the bad guys. There's no way to get back out of this without some kind of rewrite or some kind of retconning of villains coming back. Oy. Or if if these comics had continued, they'd probably have to create new bad guys. Probably. But anyway, um, comics uh, comic ended. So, brr, Silver, where do you want to take this one? Uh, final thoughts, a bit of discussion... There's an interesting question. I'm going to say final thoughts because I think that's where we can also summarize our impressions of this comic. All righty then. And you go first, my friend, since you're the one first up to bat, and I think you should be the last one up to bat too. Oh, well, much obliged. What can we say? I, th- in some ways, there is the there is my inner child just geeking out over the fact that two of my childhood shows are crossing over mm-hmm. in a way that was always possible but never really uh, explored. In the shows. So there is that enjoyment factor in this. And there is an enjoyment in seeing all these baddies from the past. But that strength also becomes a weakness. This comic is so overloaded with cameos by characters, you feel like you never get at the heart of the character conflicts. Launchpad never has to choose between two worlds. Darkwing Darkwing learns from Scrooge, but never really... You never feel like that's the central focus. The DuckTales crew is mostly known for going on wild adventures to the far corners of the Earth. Darkwing is known for combating a single or a small group of villains' sinister plans. This comic doesn't really play to either strength because the plan is so overloaded, but it only takes place in two locations. And thus, uh, neither party gets to, gets to show them in their element. So... I had fun, but I can see why this is not a celebrated comic. And as it's been deemed non-official, I kind of hope that somewhere down the line, I think IDW's got the comics these days. Uh, I don't remember who has it now, but looking at the um, page, I think it's still Boom, probably? Uh, Let me double check. Continue on, please. Well, someone still got the rest of the comic, and I'm hoping that... One way or another, we'll get another chance to see these parties team up in a, maybe a longer arc and maybe with a little bit more breathing room for the respective teams. Uh, all right, then. And Seppi, you've been quiet for a while. Um, what, have you, what did you think? It was okay. It was a fun read, especially since I read a lot of action comics. Uh, all right, then. All right, then. So anyway, as for me... Hmm. This comic, like you mentioned before, Silver, brought up some nice memories of childhood days where, oh, my, my favorite character are doing things that I highly enjoy, which is kind of, uh, what you call this? 
the trail of said story, uh, reading back on things that you re- enjoy from your childhood. I remember a lot of um, Darkwing and Duck Tales when I was younger, and reading a comic form of this and uh, and enjoyed it was pretty fun. Um, the story here could have been told better. Uh, how would I put this? I kind of understand what they're going for. I can see what they're trying to tell. They want to tell an awesome uh, crossover story, playing to both strengths of each character, but not cap- capitalizing on certain aspects. Like you mentioned, Silver, um, Scrooge and his crew are um, treasure hunters. Like they're tomb raiders. While Darkwing here is a superhero. Um, akin to Batman. So, mixing the two worlds together may seem like a good idea, but the execution in story was not fulfilled. Like, I think the word I can think of for this story is flaccid. Flaccid? Yes, flaccid. It has great ideas, it has interesting concepts, but the execution was not there. Like, for example, uh, having the villains power up using some kind of evil goo, but only to realize that, oh, evil goo is some kind of thing that doesn't really affect on the long term, like, eh? And the way that they defeated uh, Negaduck was telling them something they need to hear and done? Like, how do I put this? Some of the action scenes here, some of the things that happen in this comic kind of felt rushed, too rushed to be exact. A good example is, oh, um, Gizmo here creates a device to get the kids back to their original form. You can only use it once, so don't mess up. One page after, they succeed. What? There's no risk involved, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, usually the rule is if you say you only got one shot, you have to ask what happens when you miss that shot. Mm-hmm. And uh, overall, it's an okay story. I, I won't say that it's the best but I can understand why the Disney Corporation was angry at them for this. Like I mentioned before, uh, this comic here was not sanctioned by the Disney Corporation. And I can understand why fans were angry at it. But at the same time, it, it's not the worst. It's in, it wasn't a disservice to any character as far as I know. Oh, true that, true that. Um, it was highly entertaining, but it could have been done better. For personal note, if I were to recommend this series of Darkwing comics to someone, I would just say, pass on this one, uh, read another comic. Um, in fact, by request from a friend of mine, who is a big Darkwing uh, Duck fan, uh, she told me that there's a new 2016 comic called Disney's Darkwing Duck. So, go read on that one. That one seems to be um, good. It started last April 2016. So, yay. Much fun. By the way, before I wrap it up here, cover B of issue 18 was done by Sabrina Albergetti. If you guys do not know who she is, she was the lead storyboard artist for My Little Pony. Oh, nice. Seppi, you okay there? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, you sound very, very tired. I think we should wrap this up. So Safi can go to bed like all good kids. Indeed. indeed. I'm not a kid. I'm a teenage adult. Teenagers Um, with attitude. (laughs) Uh, But anyway, but anyway. So with that, uh, we end our review here. Once again, I would like to thank uh, Master of Lag for requesting this comic. Because if he didn't request us this one, we would never know about this comic. And it was a fun, fun read. You've allowed my inner child some freedom. Yes. Ah. True that, true that. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you very much. So anyway, if you guys at home would like to, well, request for a topic of discussion or review, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show, where a dollar would get you a thank you. Five dollars would get you, uh, well, request or review. I'm still working on that one. Um, planning on time and whatever it is, like, I'll plan on something. Next thing you know, we're reviewing Pokemon because somebody requested it. Probably. Who knows? But anyway, um, I would like to thank Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nendrogatorius, Starstream, 
and also Master of Lag. Thank you very much for the support, guys. So anyway, um, next week, what are we going to do next week, Silver? Well, we're going to return to the comics for My Little Pony, I believe, with Friends Forever number 33. Yeah, let's do that. Or we could do Friendship is Magic. We could go to the seedy underbelly of Ponyville's political outcome. Oh, no. I'll tell you what. How about we do Friends Forever 33 and then the next show, the Ponyville election? Oh, yes. I like that plan. Oh, was it called the Pection? Silver, no. We're real nightmare of politics again. At the very least, this one has a giant worm. Yeah, true that. Oh, by the way, for people at home, before I end this, I need to tell you guys at home that Capcom is releasing uh, the whole Disney Afternoon collection. It is a collection of most of the Disney Afternoon uh, Nintendo Entertainment System games. You have Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, you have Darkwing Duck, DuckTales, and Tailspin. All for a reasonable price of nineteen ninety nine. I think I can't remember. Is it twelve dollars? But still, it's available for the PlayStation Four, Xbox One, and also Windows PC. So if you ever want to try and play some classic Disney games that we played before, this is a good way to do it. Yay! Sorry, I just thought it was appropriate since we're talking about Disney. How much did they pay you, Norman? What is your soul worth? Ah, drama. <laughs> but honestly, like, don't you want to play? Like, this is fun. Uh, anyway, uh, with silent of disapproval, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Queer. Oh, uh, and we got a sleepy cuddle socks. Well, guys. That's not a word! <laughs> oh! Woohoo! Uh. <laughs> Anyway, we'll catch you guys next week. See ya. Let's get dangerous. Life is like a hurricane here in the corner. No, you, you don't have any more chances, Norman. You have no way of redeeming yourself.